Okay, so now that we have been through the plan cost management process and the sixth edition of the PMBOK here in the Crowd Trainings course, let's review the inputs, outputs, and the tools and techniques. Starting now, obviously, with the inputs. If we are trying to figure out how we go about managing the costs of our project, we need to have a high level understanding of what those expectations are for the costs. And if you recall, that is in our project charter. That project charter is really going to give us that insight to what is expected in this project and the various different informations, including, well, what is the high level, including what is the high level budget or at least the window of expectations when it comes down to the cost for this project. Oftentimes it's considered like the upper barrier, if you will, but a lot of times it sets out, here's the business case, this is why we're doing it, and included in that is the determination of, well, our project should cost or or the expenditures of this should fall within this price range or, or budgetary limitation. In either case, that's one of the inputs also when we are trying to plan out this management plan or part of the management plan we also have to think about all the other things in our file drawer or our project management plan so this is one plan but there are going to be many other plans that we're going to need to reference because if we're managing the cost in a certain way then that is reflective on our, let's say our procurement and if our procurement is done in such a way that impacts the cost well then how we manage the cost and as you see it's cyclical and there's a lot of different plans within the project management plan that could be referenced also too based on the company and the culture and the organization the industry lots of other factors which we would just briefly call enterprise environmental factors or eefs that are going to influence how we manage costs. If I'm in a startup company or an R&D, where a research and development, where we don't really need a tight limit on how we spend money because we're just trying things out. We're just, maybe that's the whole mentality within our organization. Whereas a government project that is under a lot of scrutiny, then there is going to be an element of keeping very tight limits and controls on our costs and how we name things and how we use the different information as well as organizational process assets these are going to be those assets within the organization that are going to allow us or help us perform or influence how we're going to manage the cost they could provide us templates for instance if we're in an international project where here in the united states we are going to be using dollars but this project also is going to be working in mexico and we have to worry about some NAFTA agreements and we have to worry about different costs that are associated with everything. So we have to think about the exchange rates and many other things to juggle. And that could be part of your uh, organizational process assets to assist us in that. All right, those are the inputs. Let's take a look at the tools and techniques. One simple tool and technique, if I draw my person here and he is thinking and because he has seen this before, he just knows and it's a pretty big hand for the, the style, but we're going to have different people within the organization who are going to know things and that experience, that knowledge is going to be what we are going to simply referred to as expert judgment. You are probably going to have people within your organization who have done this before or in this organization or in these types of projects. And in that case, they know what is the best ways to do certain things or how to manage the costs. Maybe it's you, maybe you have this experience, but wherever it comes from, that is collectively referred to as your expert judgment as a tool and technique. And then there's various different ways to analyze the data that we're going to look at, how things should go, how it could go, what's the market like, um, how we want to analyze our alternatives, what if we try to go this way or what if we use that way. Many different ways to analyze the best plans and that is definitely a tool and technique. 
and then if you're planning anything you can pretty much expect to have some meetings these could be video conferences they could be in person they could be presentations they could uh, fall in many different formats but you're probably gonna have to talk things over and figure out what the plans are and mesh it out and work it out and finally get to plans and then you might have to revise these plans and and meet again and again as necessary and have conversations with the right people the right times and then the output <laughs> it's pretty simple if our whole goal here is to plan cost management then our output should be a cost management plan pretty simple so if I draw all kinds of documents in here and all of this is going to fit in our overall project management plan the various different file folders but all the different plans they feed into each other but this is your cost management plan as your output because that's what we are going to use to help us manage the costs of our project.